we are privileged to have the highwayman of India at this stage right now. He is not just the highwayman of India, but also he is the person who is leading the way for us when we talk about future of mobility, which is going to be clean and green. So without much ado, let me welcome Honorable Union Minister for Road and Transport, Mr. Nitin Gatkariji. Over to you, sir. Mr. Nabil Khan, Economic Times, Auto uh, Section, Mr. Naveen Munjal, MD Hero Electric, Mr. Ms. Jyoti Malhotra, MD Volvo Car India, distinguished dignitaries, colleagues from industry, invitees, and all my dear friends. Presently, we have two big challenges. One big challenge is uh, that is to be import of fossil fuel in the country. Our import is of 17 lakh crore, and that is an economic challenge for the country. You just understand that this much of amount is now we are using for fossil fuel and which is our import. If we can save that, it can be a great thing for the country where we can create employment potential, we can make India green, we can reduce the pollution, and at the same time, we will create more jobs. Now, presently, we are working on the alternative fuel. The most important thing is electric. Then we are already adding 20% bioethanol in petrol. The idea is, now, because of Euro 6 pollution norms, now we are in trying our level best. We are actually, we need to go to Supreme Court to make an affidavit to take the permission from them that even Euro 6 norms for flex engine, where we can use 100% ethanol for that. The availability of uh, ethanol, particularly in the country, is now the huge development is going on. And that is the reason that 100% now we are making ethanol not only from sugarcane juice, molasses, C molasses, B molasses, but we are making ethanol from broken rice. We are making ethanol from corn. Even we are making ethanol from biomass like parali. The big project in Panipat started by Indian oil company where they have ethanol from parali, rice straw, one lakh lit liter of ethanol per day and 150 ton of biobitumin per day. In Assam, we have got a big factory for Indian oil. They are making ethanol from bamboo. The capital cost is high. But we are in the process that how we can reduce the cost for that. So there is a huge potential in India for the Westland, which is available in the country where we can make the plantation of bamboos. And that bamboo will create green environment in the country and at the same time, we can use bamboo is grass. So we can use that bamboo for making of bioethanol. The most important, the other challenge is pollution. And I don't need to explain about it because the Delhi people are already facing the problem. The basic policy is import substitute, cost effective, pollution free and indigenous. Now I'm going to, we are going to launch a scheme from my department Already the Central Research Road Organization and CSR, CSR uh, already they have a successful experiment and now they have got successful technology where we can convert rice straw, palari. This is a big problem in Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. Because of burning the pollution in Delhi, we are facing crucial problem. Now tractor molded unit, we can make bioethanol, biobitumin. 70% biobitumin and 30% biochar, organic carbon. Now the most important thing is our requirement for bitumen is 80 lakh ton. Out of which only 50 lakh ton of bitumen is coming from Indian refineries and 30 lakh ton is import. By making this biobitumin from rice straw and biomass, we can get at least, we can make the scheme for that it is going to helpful for the farmers. And by using this parali and biomass waste, they can get biobitumin <coughs> and NHI is ready to purchase all that bitumen from them. 
so there is no problem about the market and by which we can 30 lakh ton of bitumen we can take it from the farmers and there is a tractor molded unit so basically there are two philosophies in the automobile sectors which are working one is technology the innovation entrepreneurship science technology research skill and successful practices we name it as knowledge and conversion of knowledge into wealth is the future that is the one thing which is going on in the all this electric and everywhere the things are moving fast and the other philosophy is no one is best no material is best with the appropriate technology and appropriate vision of the leadership you can convert any west into wealth so these are the two important philosophy so recycling of the industry is very very important presently the automobile industry size in india is 7.8 lakh crore now india become third largest auto market in the world surpassing japan that is a great thing actually our number was 4 but today we are on number 3 and within 5 years our mission is to make under the leadership of prime minister modi ji we want to make atma nirbhar bharat and for that reason we need to reduce our imports and increase our export so the idea is all reputed brand, brand in the world, automobile brand in the world are now present in India. And that is the reason that I am confident that we will make this industry of 15 lakh crore. And this is the industry which is creating, at least today presently it creates 4.5 lakh jobs. This is the industry which is given maximum GST as a tax revenue to state government and central government. So after making this industry of 15 lakh crore, we will create 5 crore new jobs in the country that is most important. And the other reason is that is going to increase our export in automobile sector. Presently, this is a sector where we have good export in the auto components and different type of cars, trucks, buses already exported there. Even the two-wheeler manufacturer like Bajaj, TBS and Hero they are exporting 50% of their production. So there is a huge potential for that and that is exactly the future for the country. Presently the 85% of the dependent on this fossil fuel in our country. And that is the reason that automobile sector is already in the process of every time they are, their number is increased. But at the same time import bill is also increased. So we need to make a balance between the situation and that is the reason that we need to create alternative fuel in India and for 35 to 40 percent of the pollution in the country is because of the fossil fuel. And that is the reason that all alternatives are very, very important. Many times people are asking me, you are talking about green hydrogen, you are talking about electric, you are talking ethanol then biodiesel, bio CNG, making LNG and CNG from rice straw. So every, this type of all alternative you are talking, because there is a huge potential, samundar hai. Now in construction equipment, the size of the industry is 50,000 crore. Within two years, it will go up to one lakh crore. And now in generator set, we are using 4,000 crore liter of diesel. Now the idea is that we will convert our generators on bioethanol and already in the construction equipments, it's so, so beautiful technology. It's uh, actually, I feel that already in this auto expo when I see lot of machines, now they are converting their big machines on electric and LNG and also on using biodiesel. That is to be a great opportunity for all of us. I am telling you just the economics that if suppose we are making the construction of one highway of 1000 crore, we have to make, we have to spend 100 crores on diesel. And that is the problem that creates pollution, that is a different thing. So in place of diesel, if you can go with electric, the cost of the fuel will be 20 crore. So by saving 80 crore, we are going to save the cost. And that is the reason that every year, my ministry is making the highway of 5 lakh crores. And now, if we can save this on diesel, it will be a great saving. And here, we can reduce the cost of construction without compromise with the quality of construction. 
using of different waste material, using of fuel which is not creating pollution, on the line of that it is very important. Now presently about electric vehicle, the statistics is very interesting. Now we have 19 lakh electric vehicle registers in India. India recorded a 300 percent rise in electric vehicle sales at 10 lakh units in 2022 compared to 3.3 lakh unit in 2021. Now you see the what type of the way in which the growth is there. India's EV market is expected to grow to 1 crore units annual sales by 2030 create 5 crore direct and indirect jobs. This is very important. I just asking the, my people that is there is, as far as electric vehicle and the fossil fuel vehicle, in the electric vehicle, the more jobs opportunities are there. And that is very important that huge demand for small electric vehicles, electric two wheelers, electric autos, e-rickshaw, e-carts, I am former, I have just purchased an electric three-wheeler having capacity of 600 kg and taking my vegetables from my farm to the market. So as compared with diesel, there is a great saving. So even this e-rickshaw, e-cart, everywhere in the mobility, the electric transport is going to be a priority for the people. So recently launched the Mercedes EV which is made in India and now they have taken a decision that we will only, in the future, we will only manufacture electric vehicle. That is the decision taken by the management of Mercedes. So you understand how the way in which the total automobile industry is making concentration on e-vehicles. Now 400 plus startup of electric vehicle, electric two-wheelers, they are in the market. Interestingly, it is a really a good thing that 400 young talented people started manufacturing of two wheelers. Now the Hero and the Bajaj and TVS, they are making the electric scooter for 130 kilometer. They, they charge, they, it can go up to 130 kilometer. So they make the study that in India, every person is running for that two wheeler is only 26 to 24 meter. So they invented the model where their capacity is only for 60 kilometer after charging. So that the reason they save the cost. And today all over the country there is a competition that the this cost of this vehicle is 60,000 and 70,000. And lot of young talented startup, they are making e-scooters. And that is available in the rural part of the India. And uh, poor people, lower middle class people, nurse, safai kamgar, peon, Constable, they are <laughs> purchasing these two wheelers and there is a huge market for that. But even the big manufacturer like Hero, Bajaj, TVS, they don't have any problem because they have also got a good market and their export also is started for e-vehicle. So this is the potential we have. The other important thing is that is flex hybrid in the sustainable solution. What is this flex? The Toyota has invented the technology. There was some problem because Euro 6 emission norms is now difficult because nowhere in the world this is available. So I am thinking in the, on the line <coughs> to give them permission on Euro 4 norms. But compare with the Euro 6 and Euro 4, even comparison with the petrol engine, 77 percent less pollution gas emissions than BS 6 petrol engine. So that is I am going to uh, give the affidavit to the Supreme Court and taking the permission from them that for two years we want to give permission to that and that is to be going to reduce pollution because as compared with the petrol vehicle 77 percent pollution we are going to reduce but after two years then automobile industry will make the Euro 6 norms they are making research and development in that that is already going on. Recently the Toyota launch flex fuel strong hybrid vehicle from Toyota that is 100% on bioethanol. Now the ethanol rate is 60%. There was some problem because the mileage of petrol and ethanol there is a difference. The one liter of petrol equal to one liter 300 ml of ethanol. <coughs> that is the reason 
so there was lot of problem when the petroleum company was taking ethanol i think by it is, it is after that adding ethanol it going to reduce the average but uh, one of the russian scientists and the university have invented the solution and where the mileage of ethanol and petrol is same when i got the information i called the scientist to india i take the presentation then i called the Pe petroleum secretary petroleum minister and uh, chairman of indian oil mr vaidya mr ram kumar from faridabad indian oil and after the presentation the they were telling me that it's a very good idea but we feel it we feel that it is very difficult but after taking the trials 3 months in the faridabad laboratory now that this technology is proved now the mileage of petrol and ethanol is same and government is under consideration to implement this technology by which the average of petrol and ethanol will be same so when we will flex fuel engine we will add ethanol in it the average will be same and this flex engine is giving 60% on fuel on ethanol and they creating 40% electricity so the petrol cost will come 20 to 25 rupees per liter as comparison between flex engine and petrol engine so this is going to happen and toyota is in ready to position to launch this vehicle it is going to be a game changer why we need alternative fuel because it is most important for the diversification of agriculture towards energy and power sector because presently we are importing 17 lakh crores of fossil fuel in place of that if you can make it from corn make it from sugar cane make it from broken rice it we have surplus rice we have surplus wheat we have surplus corn even the market price are actually less than the msp and that is to be a big problem for the government so they, this is the time that we can diversify our agriculture towards energy and power sector then uh, retrofitment is also a one of the important sector in electric now there are lot of startup they have started conversion of existing petrol engine two wheeler into electric existing petrol car into electric car it create also it will create more jobs in the country now we are planning of making of electric highway on uh, just at the in this month at the 12 prime minister is going to open delhi jaipur first section of delhi mumbai express highway and i am trying my level best to make this highway as electric highway we can take electric truck electric buses electric double decker by which we can reduce the cost and delhi to jaipur we can start this service and that is to be also very very economically viable if you are making you are spending 100 rupees on petrol then for ethanol it comes to 45 rupees and for electricity it is 15 to 20 rupees so it is win win situation it is beneficial to the consumer not only pollution is reduced but the economic viability is there the what i always telling to the people that the proven technology is very important economic viability the second important thing third is availability of raw material and fourth is marketability these four important pillars for any industry any project any venture for their success so this is already all things are there so i am confident that we will get the good response regarding the electric cars electric scooters the way in which i just seen the car of volvo good now the all companies they have got their good suvs and all type of different type of good just in auto expo i see lot of models from all the companies very beautiful now there is a waiting list i remember the incident in this hotel in the same hall the all journalists asking me if the you can charge the car if and that's in the mineral time in the road if there is no electricity the car will fail then how is what is going to happen lot of question from me but today there is no problem for 400 km the car is there there is no problem and the average car running in the city is not more than 100 km so there is no problem at the night in your house you can charge the car but if you want to go from delhi to mumbai then we need charging stations we already in nhi we are making 670 road side amenities where helipad is there restaurants hotels even lot of things are there even we have charging stations so for the long term just like our idea is we are making road from delhi to dehradun 2 mm. hours delhi to haridwar 2 hours delhi to chandigarh 2 and 1/2 hour delhi to jaipur 2 hours 
Delhi to Srinagar 8 hours and Delhi to Katra 6 hours, Delhi to Mumbai 12 hours, Chennai to Bangalore 2 hours and Bangalore to Mysore in 1 hour. Already up to the end of this year, you will get all type of this road. Even we are making 24 more roads. <laughs> so, and if your electric vehicle is there, you just calculate the cost economics. In place of diesel and petrol, what is to be the economics, you can find out. It is import substitute, cost effective, pollution free, and win-win for all the stakeholders. Even for the consumer, it is really, if suppose a journalist is spending 25,000 rupees per month on the petrol, if you can purchase this electric vehicle, your bill will be 2,000 to 3,000 rupees, saving of 22,000 rupees per month. So that is exactly very, very beneficial to the common man. The reduction in uh, the lithium ion battery, that is to be a very important thing. Presently, actually, the lithium cost is one of the important thing. Actually, when we started this e-vehicle, the cost was $150 per kilowatt per hour. And that was a big problem. Today, we have already good research on lithium ion battery, aluminum ion battery, zinc ion batteries, sodium ion battery, and aluminum air technology. And lot of people are doing excellent job. The people are doing really good job. They have got a lot of new inventions. And this is the sector where research very substantially, where research is going on. So now today the cost is coming. The target is we want to take it $110 uh, per kilowatt per hour. It is when it comes to $100, the cost of petrol vehicle and electric vehicle will be the same. I am expecting within a year or a two year, the cost of electric vehicle and petrol vehicle will be the same. You don't need any subsidy on it. Because already on petrol vehicle, the GST is 48%. And uh, particularly, uh, GST on electric is only 5%. Then uh, we have taken a decision about the scrapping. The government has taken a decision that already all government cars who completed 15 years, it is mandatory for all department and corporation to scrap that car. So it creates 9 lakhs cars we are going to scrap by central government. And we are already in the budget, finance minister declared the support for scrapping by which our idea is that the gover state government uh, car number is coming to 30 to 35 lakhs. So 50 lakhs of car, <coughs> after their scrapping, we will get aluminum, copper, rubber, plastic, and steel. It will reduce the component cost, automobile component cost, by 30%. Now we are importing aluminum, copper, plastic, rubber, and because of this scrapping policy, it is a golden opportunity for automobile industry. So my request to all manufacturer of automobile industry to start scrapping units everywhere in India. We can start three scrapping units in every district. And that is the reason that because of scrapping, we will reduce the cost of car, vehicle, scooters, because the cost of aluminum, copper, plastic, rubber, everything, it is the, this is recycling material and by which we will be the more competitive in the international market, by which we will increase our share, and that is the reason that we will increase our export, and that is very important. The more than two crore old unit vehicles will be scrapped in near future, will boost the sales of electric vehicles, because when you scrap the vehicle, today I have a meeting with the speaker, and I, I just request them, so you can take one decision that after scrapping your all vehicles of the parliament, you only purchase electric vehicle or alternative fuel vehicle. He said, yes, immediately I will issue the order. So now also we are discussing with the state government, central government, that scrapping of the petrol and diesel vehicle, you should take either flex engine, either alternative fuel vehicle or e-vehicle, electric vehicle. So that is going to create more uh, demand for electric vehicle in the market. So I feel that the future is very bright. The availability of this low cost, low cost material also is going to benefit it, that which is going to reduce the cost of the two wheeler, three wheeler and car and trucks. Now the planning is to launch electric trucks.
already in the market they are in position to launch electric trucks electric double decker bus electric bus i am telling you the statistics in mumbai i got effort to launch double decker electric bus in mumbai the diesel bus expenditure is 115 rupees per kilometer and we received the tender for electric bus non ac bus 39 rupees per kilometer and for ac bus 41 rupees per kilometer so you understand my idea is presently in india we have 1 lakh 50000 buses par buses aisi hai ki horn chhod kar sab bachta hai usme <laughs> ab wo air condition electric buses if we can offer we can reduce the ticket rate by 30% and we can give good comfort to the people just like european countries we can start the double decker electric buses and from delhi to chandigarh delhi to lucknow delhi to simla delhi to jaipur it can be a great opportunity it is going to increase tourism in the country the rare earth metal such as neodymium is also in the west uh, scrapping we will get that then semiconductor metals such as silicon lithium and aluminum can be reused in auto oil components aluminum can be used in ev battery technologies such as aluminum air technology and there is also now we are thinking and we are working on the line for making public transport on electricity it is with my department the we have 1.5 lakh transport buses one thing is very important fortunately whether it is good or bad i don't make any comments on it but the population growth and automobile growth the india has got a big expertise <laughs> we have 30 crore vehicle and the day will come within 10 years our automobile number will be more than the population we need to control population and we need to control automobile population also and that is the reason that we need to uh, give good comforts in public transport that is to be the most important thing if we can make air now just uh, in bangalore i got a part to launch volvo bus uh, that is to be very beautiful bus of 15 meter and just like a ac first class so this type of now then in, in the exhibition i saw from volvo the business class bus so i feel that people will not use their, their own four wheeler they can prefer to go by this public transport it is to be need of the country and we need to have create good comforts good vehicle good buses and people will 100% accept that already the first electric double decker bus we uh, i got up to launch in mumbai we can start these buses in all over the country all over the india even in delhi and everywhere the i feel that if we go with a proper policy we can create at least there is a demand for 10 lakh buses in india and it is to be a great thing which is very important the development of fast charging and uniform battery charging system for buses is very important no problem is that in simla the buses taken from one company the charging station is different buses taken by other company the charging station is different we need one charging station that is to be we are working on that so we'll resolve that issue then we are working on road train bus rope way cable car funicular rail in my department we have received 260 proposals from various states new public transport modes like hyperloop sea planes amphibious sea plane pods and drone taxis my idea is to start this uh, public transport system from dhola kuwa to manesar in the sky we are also planning for double decker bus uh, having the capacity of 200 people in the sky already the doffel mayor has given that buses that system in philippines and vietnam we are working now the dpr is there they are doing dpr for making this sky bus in bangalore huge traffic problem big traffic problem so all this new technology are very important because the presently cost of the metro is 350 crore per kilometer i am making one metro in my own constituency that is broad gauge metro the cost is 2.5 crore per kilometer so my suggestion is we need to find out the low cost solution that is very important in the country because our per, our the per capita income of our people is that no that much higher as compared with the western countries so electric is the future it is economically viable it is win win situation for all the stakeholders 
it is going to reduce the pollution and even in the construction equipment industry lot of the big machinery now they are converting on on electric the volvo has already making big machines i launched that i got able to launch that machine you see that it can be possible so today diversification of automobile industry from fossil fuel to electric is a great historical thing in the history of our country and that is the reason that the fuel of the the future of the electric vehicle is very bright now presently in india we have 30 crores vehicles are present and the day will come within before 2030 the number of electric vehicle will be more as compared with the fossil fuel vehicle so there is a huge market for that the domestic market and the export market i feel that this is the future of our country it is going to adding of new wealth in the country creating more jobs and it is going to create more exports that is very important and as the pollution is concerned it is very very important because of this air pollution we are facing a lot of crucial health problems and this is the time that we need to work on that line and i feel that the future is very good i am again giving my thanks to economic times for uh, because we need to educate the people and that is very important that we need to go to the people about it i am giving my special thanks to the management of economic times for that once again thank you very much namaskar thank you so much sir for taking our time i'll just take one or two question uh <clears throat> you mentioned about you know uh, the material how important it is going to be at the we we need to collaborate with the country where we have these materials reserves how the government of india is trying to you know uh, work on that i know that uh, particularly we are also working on the different scheme this material is available in the different part of the world i don't feel that there is a shortage because there is already discussion that china has taken all the mines already the material is available in many countries and particularly our automobile industry also they have also working on that i know name of the countries but i don't take the name for that but uh, now the lithium oil is not a problem second important thing is in india our iit is our research organization are doing excellent research <coughs> on alternative material so the aluminum iron aluminum air technology they are also having a good research so the way in which <coughs> our iit engineers our research laboratories our atmol industry is working i feel that there are lot of people they have good solutions so this battery cost and battery material will not be a challenge our people are enough competent that they will get the solution from that so industry captains have been uh, putting this question to me that you must ask uh, honorable minister you have given uh, importance you have pushed all the options that we have for the alternate fuel but uh, the gst on hybrid which is also considered to be a cleaner technology <laughs> uh, does not still get that advantage i am with you this is very important <laughs> okay that's a great that's for <laughs> thank you sir hybrid technology we i am trying my level best to convince finance ministry that some there we need to support that in the interest of we need to reduce pollution and for alternative fuel i am also trying my level best to convince this to our finance minister thank you sir thank you glad to see you in person so my question is uh, regarding the ev scrapping and the reuse batteries so uh, in your expertise i would like to have your opinion and your expertise answer like what would be the impact on the environment in future actually frankly speaking i feel that there is a good economic viability where we can make the recycling of the waste material i am giving you the example in uh, gujarat in amdavad dolaru road we are making and we are taking 20 lakh ton of municipal solid waste material for using in that road my dream was to use all these uh, delhi which the 
Ghazipur. Or, or, or my interest was to use all that material in Delhi Merit Highway. So segregation is very important. By segregation, you will get copper, steel, rubber, glass, and we can make the recycling of the material and from the organic waste. In biodigester, we can make hydrogen, green hydrogen. And hydrogen also is a fuel for the future. I got the hydrogen car. That is from Toyota. And name of the car is Mirai. Mirai means future. So we can use maximum hydrogen in heavy industries, particularly steel industries, chemical industry, pharmaceutical industry, aviation, railway, and even for truck and buses, we can use that. So there are a lot of options. Now, I just telling you the story of import of waste rubber tire. It was banned. I requested the environment minister to allow them. Now we are adding this uh, rubber powder from waste tire, 15% in bitumen. It is going to improve the co uh, quality of the road. And the bitumen rate is 50 rupees per kg, and this is 25 to 30 rupees per kg. It's a cost saving. And at the same time, different type of all this waste material, we can make the recycling industry strong. It is going to create more jobs. And there are a lot of examples related to the lot of waste material. So I feel that we need to be, actually, some people, they have a very strong, rigid approach. That is not practical. Somewhere, recycling of batteries also, the people have got good technology. They are using this material, again, for the finished product. And there are now many industries are there. So today, my feeling is, even we allow, we can allow all the waste material available in the world. And by creating 18 meter draft into the port, into Kandla port, I was a shipping minister. So it can take the ship of 2 lakh ton. And we can take all this waste material from abroad. And we can make the recycling. Then it can be a good, good, big profit. And that is to be creating more employment potential. And it is not going to create any pollution. So somewhere in practical level, we need to change our approach about it. It is not going to create pollution. Some people who are burning tire, and that is not good. So we can ban that activity. But by using the appropriate technology, without creating pollution, we can make the recycling of this waste material that can be possible. Good evening, sir. My name is Saurabh. And I'm advocating electric vehicles since 2003. So uh, now we are making electric three-wheel. And I have seen that you are advocating the safety first in the uh, electric vehicle also. So would you think that the new technologies like ADAS, a driver monitoring system, seat belt for the driver and the passenger in electric three-wheeler could be a game changer for this industry? For three-wheeler, I'm not sure about it. Because presently, up till now, government has not taken any decision. But regarding four-wheeler, four we have taken a decision. Because somewhere, we need to understand the problem of Indian people. In the rural area, I remember. When I was a student, I was going to my village. The 13 people occupied in that Bajaj auto rickshaw. So <laughs> there is a problem. We need to develop our public transport. So somewhere your suggestion is very good. But presently, we want to implement it for four-wheelers. And uh, we can think on the line about buses also. But uh, in particularly Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh. There are a lot of bus accidents. And we are thinking, but still we are not make up our mind about it. But road safety is the priority. We don't want to compromise with it. And we want to save the life of the people. We have 5 lakhs accidents, 3 lakhs death, 1 lakh 50,000 deaths. It's very, very, very painful. And out of death, 40%, 60% death belongs to age of 18 to 34. So it is a really a painful thing for me as a minister. Every day I, we are trying. Uh, tomorrow I have a question in the parliament on this subject. But frankly speaking, what we are expecting still, we are not get that much success in it. Where people like you from media, they can make campaign for road safety. And we need to change the behavior of the common man. About the law, people don't have any fear. And that is the reason they are not uh, obeying the law particularly, that is to be a big problem. So we need to 
human behavior of the people where we need the cooperation from the people by and large. But this is a big problem, big challenge. 